Hello everyone, my name is George Trezov and I'm handling pre and post production at Fofu Music in Sofia, Bulgaria. And in today's video it will be a very short one, but again it will be connected to the management of time during a recording process and the pre-production with the scores. So let's get started. So I have loaded up a small example with just a couple of bars uh, which could provide for a commotion during a recording session and a lot of questions that will be aimed towards the conductor. In order for you to avoid this, uh, you need to prepare the scores properly in advance. So here's what I'm talking about. When it comes to uh, ensemble performing, there, as, apart from getting the right notes and the musicality, there are two things that the conductor and the musicians pay attention to. The first one is the beginning of the note or the phrase, and the second one is the ending of the phrase. And often the conductor, their um, specific gestures which are connected with this, for example, like this, so this means you need to end the note, and all the musicians need to end the note at the same time. Otherwise, it becomes uh, just like a sloppy performance. In this example, you can see that there are like two oboes and two clarinets playing, and all of them are ending on a different, on a different time. Uh, so when the musicians get their notes, and when they perform, they will know uh, that, for example, the first oboe will hold the whole bar, uh, the second oboe will end on the third beat, the clarinet will end on the first beat, uh, and then the, the second clarinet will end on the second and eighth note of the second beat. So, when obviously, when they perform this for the first time during the sight reading, the conductor will say, okay, you need to uh, finish you know, with me, you need to stop with me when I make the, the gesture. But then the musicians will say, well, here's how it's written in the scores, which one is the correct one? And then the conductor will have to think about different ways to do it. So they'll probably go down vertically, see what's, what's going on uh, within the rest of the instruments of the orchestra, and try to determine what the best way to end this would be. So they would probably say, okay, the French horns are starting to play on the second beat, so maybe it's best if everybody stops on the first beat, like the first clarinet, uh, like this. But when, when we get to the stage, there's like the physical distance between the musicians and the conductor. There's always the pressure of time. There are a lot of people uh, sitting there just uh, being, um, you know, very concentrated about what they're going to perform. So there, there's always the possibility that uh, the musician won't understand the conductor or uh, they won't hear him or her for example, so they will ask the question, sorry, can you repeat this, for example, can you, um, can you repeat where we need to end, I didn't understand this. And this takes a lot of time during a recording session. And when you have limited budget, when you're um, being stressed by the amount of minutes that you need to record in one hour, all these tiny details that are um, left out in the scores they might provide problems for you during the recording. So, take care about the endings, uh, look at how the instruments between the different groups are ending, whether the woodwinds are ending the same way as the strings, or if they are intended to stay longer than the strings. So, these tiny details, when you uh, think about them properly, can save you a lot of time uh, when you're recording. Hope this will I hope this was useful until the next time.